Can you really add 200 horsepower to your naturally aspirated small block Chevy without using nitrous or boost? Yes. Yes, you can. And here's how. All it takes is the right combination of parts. Hello, everybody. I'm Richard Oldner, and as always, welcome to the channel. Today's question is, can we add 200 horsepower to a small block Chevy without mm. nitrous and mm. without boost? If you check out this video right here, I'll put up a link, you can see we did the same thing with an LS. In fact, we're going to revisit that video before we find out if we can do the same thing to a small block. Okay guys, let's jump right in in our comparison between the LS and the small block Chevy. And remember, we're not comparing directly displacements. What we're trying to find out is if we, can we add like 200 horsepower naturally aspirated? And actually, I already have a video up on the LS, so spoiler alert, we know it can be done. What I'm gonna do is we'll go over real quickly what we did on the LS and then we'll jump to the small block and see if we can add 200 horsepower to the small block while retaining the stock bottom end. In this case, the stock bottom end on the small block Chevy is something different than it is on our truck motor. So on the LS, what we did was start out with a junkyard motor. In this case, it was an L33. So an all aluminum 5.3 liter that I pulled from a truck and then what we did, we've been using that motor subsequently for a ton of different dyno tests. And this, this thing has over 500 dyno pulls on. So we've run all kinds of things. We've run boosts. We've run a bunch of different camshafts. We've run a bunch of different cylinder heads, a bunch of different intake manifolds, included carbureted stuff, nitrous, you name it. We've run it on this motor. We ran the little M90 supercharger at various upgrades. So all kinds of stuff. But the upshot is, is what we did is upgrade this thing with a set of heads, cam, and intake manifold and push this thing up so that we gained you know, nearly 200 horsepower. We're gonna show you step-by-step step how we did that, starting off with our stock motor. We took the motor from the wrecking yard, put it up on the dyno, put inch and seven eighths long tube headers on it, put a Holly management system on it and big injectors because we know we were going to be adding power to it. And then we ran this thing with our electric water pump the way that we do. And as I said, the long tube headers open throttle body. And when we ran this thing with all of the other things being stock, it made 364.5 horsepower and 389 foot pounds of torque. Uh, one of these is the horsepower curve. One of them is the torque curve. Red is torque and blue is horsepower. Let's take a look at some of our upgrades. The first upgrade we did was if you just do a camshaft on this thing, and what we did was took a Brian Tooley Racing Truck Norris camshaft, just a cam. We also did springs on it because we would be doing bigger camshafts in this thing, but we also did a spring upgrade. After, <coughs> excuse me, I'll go ahead and put the specs up here for the Truck Norris cam. After we did the Truck Norris cam, peak power jumped up to 424 horsepower and peak torque was up to 415 foot-pounds of torque. And you can see it gained good power basically all the way through the curve. So our next upgrade for this combination was we, we did, as I said, a number of different camshafts and stuff. But let's take a look at the next upgrade and what happened. And I'm going to get rid of our stock combination so that you can kind of see what's going on here. Otherwise, it gets a little bit busy. But what we did was we added a fast intake manifold and we also changed the camshaft. So what we did was we still have our stock, stock short block. We have our stock 799 heads on it with springs and we replaced the truck Norris cam with the BTR red hot camshaft. Again, I'll go ahead and put the specs up here so you can see what the spec change was. Comparison between the truck Norris cam and the red hot cam. We also did a fast LSXR intake manifold and 102 millimeter throttle body. All of the other things remain the same. Obviously we did tune the thing so it was optimized, but really these things want to run the same timing and these things wanted to run the same air fuel with both camshafts. Once we did the cam and intake upgrade, the peak power jumped from 424 up to 481 horsepower, 480.7. Peak torque actually remained about the same right at like 415 foot pounds of torque. You can see what we've done now, and this will continue on, is that we've pushed power production higher in the rev range with the bigger camshaft. The fast manifold also did that a little bit, but we're making more power from 5100 on up but less torque below that, as you can see. So depends on what you're trying to do. Do you want to, you know, 
if you want to trade the peak horsepower gains, pretty good horsepower gains, but you are going to have torque losses. So now let's take a look at our final combination where this thing made over 500 horsepower. And you can see, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of one here just so that you can kind of see the back-to-back -back test here. Okay, so this is our final change, and then we did a number of different things here. We put a bigger camshaft in. It was a BTR LS3 Stage 4 camshaft. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here. You can see it's quite. A, it's even bigger than the, the Red Hot cam was. We also put a set of ported TrickFlow 220 ASCAST heads. They came from TrickFlow ASCAST. The guys at Ryan Tooley Racing did some fairly thorough porting on them, and they know a thing or two about porting heads. Brian having owned Total Engine Airflow in the past. Uh, we also changed the intake manifold. We removed the fast intake and put on a short runner, fairly high RPM BTR Trinity intake manifold. And you can see this pushed power, peak power production up fairly high. We were making peak power out here at like 75 or 7600, where this thing made 542 horsepower. Peak torque was actually down a little bit, 404 foot pounds of torque again. Bigger camshaft, more head flow, short runner intake manifold. We're making lots of peak power, but we have pushed it higher in the RPM range and sacrificed power down low. Now let's take a look and see what happens with the small block ship. Okay, now that we know that we can gain nearly 200 horsepower with uh, you know the right heads cam and intake stuff on the LS, can we do it on a small block Chevy? And let's find out the answer. So this particular small block Chevy actually started out as a DZ302, which means it made pretty good power even in stock trim, you know, much more than your average, because this would be a lot easier actually if we started out with, you know, a small block 350 that was making like 200 or 250 horsepower, It'd be pretty easy to do this. But we started actually started this out with a DZ302, which was the high performance version of the small block with a four inch bore and a three inch stroke made back in the day to qualify for Trans Am racing that, that GM was doing, you know, the Camaros and the Mustangs. So this was a 302 and what they did was they made the displacement to work for the Trans Am rules. And then they just basically equipped the production motors with all of the high performance stuff that they had during the day that they also put on the 327 and the LT1 350. So this thing had fuely heads. This one had 186 heads on it. There are lots of different casting number versions of those heads that flow the same, but it was a 64 cc chamber. It had the 20216 valves on it. You know, it was the popular performance Chevrolet heads at the time. We had the the <clears throat> solid flat tappet um, Duntoff or DZ302 cam. <laughs> it started out with a with a factory dual plane intake manifold. We ran a 750 Holly on it. We ran long tube headers on it. We basically ran a stock DZ302. It was 11 to 1 with the dome pistons on it. We basically ran a stock DZ302 with long tube headers on it. And in this configuration, the motor made 357 horsepower. Peak chart checked in at 332 foot pounds. Not too bad for a small block uh, 302, especially. Here's what happened when we started doing upgrades. You can see that this upgrade <laughs> showed a big change in power. In fact, we were over 500 horsepower, 518 horsepower, and right at 400 foot-pounds of torque. We started our run much later. Had we started our run earlier, we definitely would have saw a loss of power because we stepped up you know, to a lot of things here to actually make these kind of power gains, we basically had to kind of change everything just like we did with uh, the LS previously. So we got rid of the fuel heads, we got rid of the DZ302 camshaft, we got rid of the dual plane intake manifold. Instead, we put a set of Airflow Research 210 heads, you know, CNC ported, small chamber, big valves. An Airflow Research head is, is head and shoulders, basically miles above what that factory uh, DZ302 had, the 186 head. The Airflow Research head flowed over 300 CFM, where the factory head is lucky to flow 200 CFM. We put a big solid roller camshaft in it. It was a 640-621 lift at 256, 260 at 50, and 107 degree lobe separation angle. We still had our inch and three-quarter headers on it. We changed the oiling system 
for a Moroso pan, had a kick out windage tray, you know, a really good oiling system upgrade. That's something that we didn't do on the LS, but on this small block we did. We put a Holly Strip Dominator single plane intake manifold on it and then installed a 950 Holly Ultra XP good carburetor. These all had MSD distributors on them. We even tried a one inch tapered combo spacer and tried adjusting the lash, doing lash loops on this. And so in its final configuration, like I said, 518 horsepower and right at 400 foot pounds of torque. So a big jump in power, but we weren't, we weren't close enough really to our 200 number. So what we did was we did another upgrade on this thing. And you can see we got even more power. And what we did was we added a tunnel ram intake manifold to this thing. <clears throat> so we ran an, an Edelbrock tunnel ram and then two Holly 750 carburetors. Everything else stayed the same. The airflow research heads were the same. The cam was the same. The headers, um, uh, the Moroso pan, all of that stuff to say stay the same. Basically what we did was we did an induction system upgrade. And every time we go from a single plane intake manifold and step up to a tunnel ramp, the thing makes not only more power, but as you can see, this thing basically made more power everywhere. And this is normally what we see when you compare a single plane to a tunnel ramp. The tunnel ramp has all of the runner lengths are even. We have obviously, we, and we had plenty of carburation with the single plane, but we had two 750s on this and then run with the single plane or run with the uh, tunnel ramp. We made 545 horsepower. <laughs> excuse me, peak torque checked in at 416 foot-pounds of torque. So good gains in torque, good gains in power, and starting out at 355 or so and going up to 545, we were almost at our 200 number. So this is how you gain 200 horsepower from a small block Chevy, in this case, a DZ302. I'm Richard Holder. Please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I'll keep testing.